Hi everybody, I'm getting cleaned up in camera for you. I remember I used lipstick for blush. So. That reminds me about the story when you were the clown, remember? <laughs> Happy Sunday afternoon everybody. We're back from the uh, range today and I um, I restricted my firing on the uh, on the range today to the uh, pistol. I did not do anything with the uh, with the Plankster uh, Gen's A1522 because I wanted to uh, really just focus on the form out there today and the proper proper form. Taking into account a lot of the stuff that Jen and I talked about since last week about the proper grip and about the, uh, the proper stance and the way to do it. And I was amazed today. I have to tell you, when we were out at the firing line, I was amazed at the bad form that's out there. You and I were literally the only people on that range that were pitched forward for a much stronger stance with our knees bent than uh, people pitched back with uh, one finger would just knock them over. So what were your thoughts generally today about, uh, you know, the form that you see out there? I was scared in two situations when some kind of a gangster type uh, comes with this big full-size 9mm and lets his mom handle a pistol and she didn't even know how to hold it and she held it in the old style that they taught 20 years ago like this that's how they taught back in the days Okay, that's not how you Nowadays, with high high power guns, you don't shoot like that anymore. You, know, you have to have a secure grip, and we saw that, for example, was very scary. We had on the other side a uh, young lady that had her boyfriend trying to teach her to shoot a full size handgun, and she was maybe like five foot one, five foot two very slender build and uh, of course a uh, has the cock hammer in the back and uh, she had her thumb already stuck in there and I thought oh my god if she pulls that trigger it's going to rip part of her thumb off so It'll be the time she, ever she was leaning way back and it was just really terrifying in two instances uh, in general find that I'd say about 95% of the people that go okay. to a shooting okay. range have no proper training and you can already see that when somebody, when somebody doesn't have the proper stance and doesn't hold the, the whatever firearm that is they don't hold it properly when they discharge it okay so you can then already tell this, those are dead giveaways that these people don't even know what they're doing. It's really scary. So yeah, because uh, because a lot of people just buy a gun, they go through the gun safety test, but they never will get instruction on how to fire the weapon, how to how to stand, how to hold it. They might watch a few YouTube videos or something like that. But, Shooting, I think, is something like any other hobby that you pursue. You have to really, you have to get the educational aspects to get better and better and better, I believe. And I concentrated on that in the 1970s and in the 1980s. So, Jen is absolutely correct on that. So. We also had an incident, and I was a Vietnam veteran, and I have nothing against the Vietnam veterans. I salute you guys and girls. I have uh, one of our best friends is a Vietnam veteran, but we had a Vietnam veteran there that had a rather old semi-auto hand pistol, and he loaded the wrong caliber into the pistol, and the pistol jammed, and we were at a ceasefire, which means you, you lay your firearm down and you back off from the bench and take a seat because people will walk down the firing line to hang up their targets. So he had this jam and he was approached to lay down the firearm and back off the bench. 
and he was already irritated about the malfunction of his firearm. So he got into this guy's face and that guy walked away and so he grabbed the gun with the uh, with the hammer barrel, face, hammer with the, bar yeah. the barrel actually facing backwards and he walked down along the firing range, which is already a big no-no. So they had a big, big to-do, and you know, I got nervous, you know, maybe this guy freaks out or something, so. Yes, yeah, so it was, he Obviously was he got barred from the range, yeah. so that's it, so. Uh, today's shooting um, started, we always start with the target that they give you when you pay your 15 bucks, so. My day looked, uh, looked pretty good, you know, I had a bit in the black, but. What was significant about me today was I had much more within the scope of the uh, center and as the day went on, and Jen worked with me more on the grip and the stance as you'll see when we get to the, uh, to the human uh, silhouette targets, it was a lot better, but it was a good opener for me. And uh, Jen, I think you had a uh, good opener with the... Uh, with your nine, with your, with your yes, block there. Had, uh, you had a good tight. One, two, three, three within one inch right here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. So it's ten, ten rounds in the center. I'm very pleased with that. A really good grouping. I also have here very nice close cluster here. And it's all on the map. As well as down here, a very close cluster. I am very pleased with that. Yeah, and I did actually double tap some of them. Which, if you don't know what double tap is, you basically shoot off a round and immediately shoot off a following you round. Basically, you, your first round you will have time to aim. On the second uh, shot, you don't have time to aim because as you have fired, bam, you immediately, bam, fall off with the second shot. And I still did very good, so. Yeah, you did great. Very good good opener there. Then we went to the human uh, targets here, the silhouettes. And uh, Jen used two different. She, uh, you started with the nine. Yeah, uh, and uh, I went for headshots first, and I got actually two headshots in. A shot right here in the throat, and uh, a few shots here and there. Just good tight grouping, the heart over the heart. Here. And then I got the 22 rifle, and with the 22 I actually shot the heart area here. Very solid tight group, also very tight group here in the uh, mid section here, mid chest, and here in the. Uh, lower abdomen, kidney area, very nice tight grouping. So I have definitely improved on the 22, but I will definitely take those iron sights off and put a red dot. Put a red dot on. and it'll probably be 50% um, better. Be even better. And I've got actually two rounds in the, in the orange Excellent. even. Excellent. So I have improved with the 22. So. Now I have to say I was very happy today when we went over yeah. to the uh, silhouette today because excellent. I really didn't have last last week I tended to be left shifted on everything and today I thought uh, even though I'm still favoring the left it was a much wider dispersal and uh, one in the X but everything generally on the map where you wanted it here in the, uh, in the area and at the very end when I had uh, half of uh, half of a magazine, five shots. I went ahead and just really focused on trying to do head shots and I really surprised myself that I got four of those five into the uh, into the headshot area. So I'm really getting used to the iron sights, the uh, white dot sights on the uh, Beretta. I really feel like they're really true and accurate. And what really helped me today was that, uh, if you don't mind me telling them, the, the push-pull grip. Where you're pushing, you're holding the, uh, pistol, the pistol with your right hand, and you're pushing forward while at the same time you're pulling back on the uh, left hand, and it really helps steady a lot as opposed to just laying loose in your hands. It really helped to steady stuff down, and then with bending forward, 
for a better stand. I can tell you, it, it improved my shooting probably 30% over, uh, over the past week. I, all, credit to, uh, all credit to Jen for that, for uh, the grip, because I immediately felt like instead of having a little bit of uh, wobble, it just immediately took a ton of the wobble out of what I was doing. You, will, you can imagine like a vice grip as those two things that come together. And that's exactly what you want to do with your hands. Your dominant hand, whether it's the right or left, that holds the firearm will push forward. And with the non-dominant hand, in our case the left hand, it will pull towards you. And it's going to be like a vice grip, really, really holding it very difference. secure. It was amazing the difference in, uh, in just feeling comfortable, as opposed to things kind of moving slightly. When I had that push-pull, I mean, there was, there was no movement at all. And for the first time since I picked up the Beretta, I could actually focus on the uh, iron sights. They got two dots and then a center dot down on the... Uh, uh, end of the uh, end of the barrel there, and you put the center dot between. The and I could really concentrate on that for the first time, and I think it really paid off today to be able to do that. So I'm really happy, a for what you taught me this week, and b for encouraging me to buy the uh, Beretta nine mm The Beretta I feel like I can really uh, handle it. It's so. incredible. The Beretta will eat. Any ammunition you'll feed it, nine millimeter, yeah, it'll eat it. I was mixing aluminum with the brass case stuff today. I gotta say, I had the PMC. I, I shot five rounds of the PMC yeah, yeah. rounds, and I had uh, feeding pumps on the Glock. When I went back to my uh, other laser brass, just it just Still. blew through like. Butter. Butter. So, ammo counts. Ammo does count. So, I also saw a guy shooting wolf ammunition, which is uh, Russian-made stuff, and I asked him how it did. What was he shooting? A Glock or something? He yeah. had the Glock 17, like I did. So he said, hey, no, he said it's hundreds of hundreds of rounds. He had two, two jams on it, so it's pretty good. You know, it's, it's, you know, you got to be cost conscious sometimes. When you're doing I shoot stuff. the wolf. 22 long rifle ammo and it was smooth. You did a great job today. And so and, uh, I'm very proud of you. You've done Thank great. You. I'm proud of you I'm too. I'm always for excited. Being patient and a uh, great when, teacher. When somebody pays attention and stays focused, I'm really pleased yeah, it was with really that. Good. So it was so I also Thank you, honey. Well, wrap it up. Just want to wrap it up with some that I mentioned in the beginning of the video that will come up on the collab channel. Make sure that you wear appropriate footwear. Appropriate footwear when you go out onto the Can range. I wear flip flops? You cannot wear flip flops because we had a gentleman two rows over. He was wearing flip flops and he had several near falls as he was handling his firearm and uh, got me to the point I just wanted to run and hide behind a crapper. You want somebody with um, lousy footing with a, uh, holding a uh, handgun. And ladies, you may not want to wear tops like, like these. I had uh, a cartridge uh, shell casing eject and went right down. <laughs> right down. And I was scrambling. I probably pulled, I probably gave everybody a good boob show. I just ripped the thing down and grabbed that hot casing. I had... <laughs> One eject from my gun into here, but there was three people down, okay? He was about 12 feet away. He was shooting a uh, striker-fired 9mm full-size. I'm not sure if it was a... I think it was a 6 hour. Anyway, that gun ejected the cartridges so far that I caught one of his cartridges in here, did that on purpose. 12 feet away. I thought, hey Holmes, <laughs> you're sure throwing them things in, man. <laughs> Alright, well thanks so much for watching our uh, recap of our uh, afternoon on the range, and stay tuned for more stuff on the O'Kelly channel.
I'm going to switch up with your uh, 